Good afternoon. I'm Jared Brown with IBM. I'm here to talk about the Watson Decision Platform for Agriculture. Uh, if you can't tell, I'm from the U.S. I live in Kansas. Uh, we have a, a lot of wheat farms and co uh, corn and soybeans and barley and things like that. Uh, the challenge is, is if you, if you go to any agriculture uh, technology conference, um, you're going to hear about the, the, the challenge of you know, the growing population. We have to feed more people. Um, and, and how are we going to do that? Uh, lifestyles are getting healthier. Uh, consumers are demanding quality food. They want to know where it came from. Uh, this creates a challenge and an opportunity in the marketplace. <clears throat> Agriculture decisions uh, historically have relied on instinct and experience. Um, that's never going to go away, by the way. Um, but these decisions are being made daily, hourly. Um, you know, when, when to water, when to plant. Uh, when to harvest, what variety of seed to plant, um, things like that. What's the weather going to be tomorrow? <clears throat> what IBM is trying to do is lift the sector as a whole. There's, there's, there's several areas that we focus on. Uh, food producers, of course the grower. In order to develop the, the type of insights that we need, we have to have grower participation, uh, which means that we have to understand that, that growers, they, they want to farm. Um, they, they don't want to have to be data scientists, they don't want to have to be computer technicians, they want to farm. And so we have to make the, the technology, the da data available um, in, a, in a way that is useful for their day-to-day -day operations. Um, farm input companies, uh, seeds, fertilizers, things like that, uh, financial services, and governments. So what type of data goes into making these decisions? We have IOT, IOT data, connect, we just discussing, you know, actually discussed many times in many presentations uh, over the last day and a half, but um, connected tractors, sprayers, combines, uh, any type of that, that equipment, uh, field sensors, personal weather stations. Uh, there's public and private data that goes into the platform. Um, of course, imagery, uh, just discuss drones or manned aircraft imagery, high resolution, and then um, your own data that you bring into the platform. Behind the scenes of the Watson Decision Platform is PEARS. Uh, PEARS is a, is a, uh, it's a, it's really a data store that allows you to store, uh, it, it stores hundreds of, of existing data sets and allows you to do geospatial analytics. Essentially anything that you can, you can analyze that involves a, a, a location, uh, you, you can pull up and query data sets within, uh, within pairs and, and do all types of cool things. It does require probably a data scientist to work within pairs, but pairs kind of operates behind the scenes. Um, if you're using the Watson Decision Platform, you're not really interacting with pairs, but it also is a standalone product to be able to, uh, to do, to do uh, work on larger geospatial areas if you're not concerned with a specific field location and, and more of a, a larger maybe country or county or state or city. In the essence of time, I'll skip through that one. Um, so this is just an example of some of the things you can do in pairs. Uh, you can look at soil moisture in large areas. Um, you can uh, look at soil temperatures, uh, water holding capacity, crop yield forecasting. Um, you, can, you can track seed varieties or genetics um, and where they're going to perform the best. So a lot of that data feeds into the Watson Decision Platform. It was kind of birthed. Um, out of work we did with Ian J. Gallo um, regarding uh, smart irrigation a few years back. Um, as you see here, the, the term digital twin is repeated again. Um, we're, we're essentially trying to create this true digital twin of a farm. And, and besides the, the, the mapping, but all of the data that comes into that. So farm data, like, so it starts out with field boundaries. Um, what type of crops planted in that field? When was it planted? What variety? Uh, maybe phenotype information. Um, the soil data, so what are the tillage practices? What's the organic matter makeup? What type of soil? The water holding capacities, um, elevation and drainage. Weather data, uh, as you may or may not be aware, IBM purchased the weather company uh, back in 2016. And so weather is a big part of the Watson Decision Platform. Um, <clears throat> so you get uh, historical, current, and then uh, forecasted weather. And then monitoring crop, whoop, monitoring crop yield, um, 
and then, and then protection. How do you protect those crops? So the analytics, um, we, what, what we do is we, we collect the field boundaries and then we, uh, on a weekly basis, every, every three to five days, depending on location and, the, and satellite passing, we, we do satellite imagery. Apply some various AI machine learning analytics. Um, you get your, your, you see your farm field boundary. There'll be some Im images later that kind of walk through that. Um, NDVI for crop health. Uh, soil moisture and soil temperature at four different depths. Um, you'll, uh, you'll get ri risk of pest and disease. And that, that's something that we're actually working on a partner by partner basis. Um, just because there's thousands of pests and diseases and it depends on what geography you're in, um, on what's, what's the most concern. So we work with a partner to create a pest and disease model and, 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 and show that risk there. And then of course yield forecasting. So it's visualized in operations dashboard which is available on a mobile application um, or a web-based uh, version. And this is a screenshot that shows the field. Um, the, you click on the icon, it shows the size of the field, what's planted, when was it planted. Monitors, uh, the image on the left is showing, um, is a crop health, and actually that's an outdated image. Um, the, the resolution is much greater than that now. Um, it's not pixelated like it is in this image. And then on the right is showing soil moisture. This is an example of a customized dashboard. So, so understanding that the grower uses the Watson Decision Platform for agriculture out in the field. They've got their, their mobile device. Uh, they may be using it on a, on a web-based version on their computer. Um, <clears throat> but that data is being fed up at the enterprise level. So you may be, a, you may be an insurance company, a bank, um, a, a, a grain trader, a grain buyer, a food and beverage company that contracts and you have an interest in what's happening in the field to understand your supply chain. Um, so you are not concerned about what's happening in an indi individual field, but you want that data aggregated together. So we, we work with our, our clients to, to help customize dashboards that, that are relevant to the, the information they want to extract from that data. Um, the, the platform, we call it a platform. It, it, it can be purchased in a nice little package that includes all of those analytics, but it's also ava available individually in an a la carte manner. So it's, it's like, a, it's like a, there, there's APIs, and so if you have an existing platform and, and you're interested in, in the analytics, that, that can be done via an API, as well as the weather data. Um, so, it, so it's an embedded solution. The, the platform was developed to, uh, you know, for remote sensing, but has the ability to expand. Um, so if you have the IoT data, if you have field sensors, if you have uh, you know, any data coming off of equipment, um, you can feed that into the platform. Um, if there's additional crop disease models or additional crops, um, yield models that you want to bring into the platform, um, you can do that and you can extend the platform over time. So th this is an example of visualization that the grower might see. Um, things like soil moisture and temperature, crop stress, um, all of the weather data. So, so to, to help understand, uh, a lot of people don't realize that IBM is in weather now, and we actually have the largest, uh, largest uh, weather uh, data globally. Um, we are doing, uh, th at three kilometer resolution globally, every hour is, is our forecasting. Um, and and that's, that's actually gonna extend um, over the next probably year to, to every 15, every 12 to 15 minutes. Um, and so within the platform, you're able to see, you're, you're able to see forecasted data, um, look out up to uh, 10 to 14 days um, over the next few hours. You can, you can customize alerts within the platform for safety reasons. Um, when when the, you can, you set the thresholds if you wanna be alerted when a, a frost may, may occur or has occurred, um, when there's heat stress. Uh, what, it's very customizable within the web application. And then there's the, the visualization for the, for, the, for the enterprise. So that, like discussed earlier, it feeds up to the enterprise. They want to see a different view. Um, and so you can gain a lot of different insights that, that may not be as interesting to a grower, but interesting to an enterprise. So uh, they were talking about drones, and I'll just, I'll just add this. Um, the platform is using satellite imagery, but, 
but we, you can bring in high resolution imagery. One thing that I just realized that I didn't include in that is our di uh, disease identification um, application. So right now we've trained the model on corn um, and I think you know, four or five diseases. And so you see a risk of pest and disease on your, on your application. You go out to that field, you take a camera, snap a picture, it identifies that disease um, and with a competency. So we, we work with partners to, to develop specific disease models for whatever disease of interest. Thank you. If you have any questions, see me after or send an email. I'm happy to pass out a card if you, if you want to get in contact and learn more.